Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy day, we celebrate the night when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life. We gather with the church throughout the world in rejoicing and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ. Through light, water, and word, bread, and wine, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ's coming again in glory. Let us pray. Eternal God and Jesus Christ, you have given the light of life to all the world. Bless this new fire and increase in us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoice now, all heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate the divine mysteries with exaltation and for so great a victory. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O holy church. Exult and glory. The risen Savior shines upon you.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through our Son, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to welcome all of you who are here today. We are so pleased to have you worshiping with us. And um, those who are online and those those are here and any guests that may be here, I can tell you this is a really great place. <laughs> Come back and visit. <laughs> so... Welcome and happy Easter. Gets me. That was 
so helpful. It always, I will have this toy after church so you can see me out there and everybody can get a chance, okay? So take a seat. So this was a good surprise. It's kind of a fun surprise, but it startles me, right? Has, um, did anybody else at their house this morning have any good surprises? Yeah? What'd you have? Is there any surprises at your house this morning? Boys that the Easter Bunny brought. What else? Eggs and toys from the Easter Bunny. What did you get, Ollie? What was it? Wrestling toys. Nice. What did you get? He came so late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, sometimes when you go to church on Sunday, the Easter Bunny comes while you're at church, right? It's amazing. So, <laughs> go. yeah, and he came late at night, too. That's right. So that's another fun surprise. But the best surprise today, the most fun, the surprise that we're celebrating is that the tomb was empty, right? Jesus rose. It was a sad week. We learned about how Jesus died, right? And then we waited a couple days, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and a couple other people, some of them named Mary, went to the tomb, and they were expecting to see Jesus and to still be sad, right? But the tomb was empty. Jesus wasn't there, and that's what we celebrate today, right? We celebrate that Jesus rose, that he loves us so much. God loves you so much, right, that Jesus rose, and that you have eternal life, which we'll talk about another time. Okay, happy Easter. Thank you for coming up. All right, he's so back. See you. I'll see you after church with this. first reading of Easter Sunday, Acts 10, 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God appoint, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witness to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Be to the psalm for the day, Psalm 118, 1 through 2, 14 through 24, and please read responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I 
the Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices 
so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled, wet, rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told, told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. be seated. Grace and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the question of the day is, does this day, does Easter make for us? What difference does it make for us? Does the resurrection we celebrate today really matter to us in our lives. I want you to listen to this duck parable written by Soren Kierkegaard. Once upon a time, there was a little town of ducks. Every Sunday, the ducks waddle out of their duck houses and down Main Street to their duck church. They waddle into the sanctuary and squat in their pews. The duck choir the duck praise band, and the duck bell choir waddle in to take their places. And the duck pastor waddles in, opens the duck Bible, and reads to them, My dear ducks, today is Easter, the day of our Lord's resurrection. Alleluia! Christ is risen. And the duck congregation responds, Good job. The duck pastor continues, resurrection means a new kind of life for you. God has given you wings to fly, to mount up and soar like eagles. No more can walls confine you. No more can fences hold you. You have wings. God has given you wings and you can fly. And all the ducks shouted, amen, alleluia. Indeed. And then they all waddled home. <laughs> yes, Kierkegaard does tell us that resurrection matters, but only if we allow it to change us. The Easter event, the resurrection of Jesus, claims to be the one and only event that changed the world, that changed everything forever. The duck pastor preached good news of resurrection freedom for those ducks. No longer do they have to waddle everywhere. They can fly. That's life-changing for ducks. No, they just chose to waddle back home. And they, they choose to keep waddling. Despite all their Easter alleluias, resurrection really held no life-changing meaning for them because, well, I guess they have a fear of flying or fear of change. Perhaps some ducks had never flown and they've been waddling so long 
that they all think waddling is the way we've always done it. Right, Lutherans? <laughs> Resurrection means a new way of living without fear, willing to take risks that God calls us to in order to have the abundant life of peace and well-being for which God created us. I really love Mark's Easter story. Mark's gospel is the shortest of all the gospels. Mark likes to get right to the point. And so his ending to the Easter story is open-ended. I mean, you didn't hear all the things that you hear in the other gospels. Those who first saw the empty tomb, tomb fled in terror and amazement and said nothing to no one. You see, what happens next in an open-ended story is that it's up to each one of us to finish the story with our own lives. Mark, like Kierkegaard, ends his story with ducks still waddling. Nothing changed. They could not see how resurrection matters. There is a fine line between life and death. This is my trophy to that line, my reminder. It is a reminder of that fine line between life and death. Now, I don't know how much you can see it, but I have scrapes all here, have a big tire track here, and a big chunk out of the side. So, one Sunday afternoon in May, 2008, I think it was, David and I went for a ride on our Vespas. I was not going to wear my helmet just this once because, well, you know, helmet hair. <laughs> David insisted I wear it. We'd been riding for four years and had just made the last payment on the scooters. Well, as you have probably guessed from my helmet, we had an accident. A car pulled in front of us and slammed on the brakes. And when I tried to stop, I ended up hitting David's scooter and knocking him off of it. Then somehow, I guess, I think, because of these tire tracks tell me that I went over the handlebars, and I don't know how this happened. But you can see the tire marks on the face shield and on the top of the helmet. I then bounced up the street and landed against the curb, as you can tell from the missing chunk on the side. David sustained a broken ankle. Because of the helmet, I sustained no injury to my face or head, not a scratch. The rest of me, however, was covered in road rash that would require two and a half hours to change my bandages every night. Nurses from the church came. And I remember the paramedic looking at me saying, if it weren't for that helmet, we would be going to the morgue not the ER. And David wanted to gloat, but he didn't. <laughs> he had just pointed out the thin line. We never know exactly when. And so we want to live life in the fullest way that God intends for us. Resurrection means we can live without fear, even our fear of death. Jesus' message is that nothing, not even death, is the end because resurrection matters. Kids are good at living without fear. If you happen to have a child, like our grandson Jake, you know this, they take risks. One day I panicked catching him climbing the rails of our back porch. If he falls, he's going back on his head and there's only pavers to catch him. Pointing out the pavers, I said to Jake, what if you fall? And he said, but what if I don't? <laughs> I haven't answered that question yet. <laughs> A no-fear approach to life can be risky, not with unnecessary risk-taking, but with a passion to try new and different things. We have a God of grace who is with us, who is not in the business of granting wishes, but who is in the business of raising people from the dead. 
Resurrection freedom can change how you live. Go out boldly with no fear of flying into a new life. What if you fall? What if you fail? God is with you to help you back up. But what if you don't? God is still there with you, cheering you on. So, no more waddling ducks. You can fly. Go out to claim your resurrection freedom. Amen and amen. And one other thing. Each of you has to take home today your own duck, your Easter duck, to remind you of this message. And it's a duck that reminds you of the parable and that has bunny ears, which tells you it's Easter. A constant reminder to you of the Easter message. Amen. So... Lisa, we don't do this, do we? <laughs> forward during this next hymn uh, to play their percussion instruments, and they can just be right out here in front. <laughs> we are the worship band at our church, and we are called United Adoration. And we do have a tradition to allow our children to come down and play instruments with us. Often it's at the end of the service, but this is our big song for the house band, so we're going to have them come now, and it's okay. <laughs> we're going to be singing Great Things by Phil Wickham. If you are not sure if you know the words, I think that you'll be ready to sing the chorus with us after the second time. Come, let us bow at his 
Today, it is our joy to baptize five children. So I invite the families, the children and their families, to gather around the font. And you kids, before you sit down, if you want to come closer to look, please do. <laughs> Church Council offered me a super soaker. <laughs> One, two, we got them all. <laughs> okay. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Sponsors, I invite you in individually to, or if you're sponsoring one yeah. together, um, I ask you, I ask you to present them. I present for baptism Isabella Rose Martinez, Jackson Adam Hatt, Hatt, Elise Martinez, Olivia Alessandra Martinez and Elena Elizabeth Martinez. Parents, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your children baptized into Christ? I do. As you bring your children to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with them among God's faithful people, bring them to the word of God, and the Holy Supper. Teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in their hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture them in faith and prayer so that your children may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Parents, do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. I do. You're married. <laughs> right. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture these persons in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. I do. People of God, do you promise to support Isabella, Jackson, Juliana, Olivia, and Elena? and pray for them in their new life in Christ. I invite you to stand as you are able as we profess our faith. I ask you and all the baptized to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defied God the powers of this world that rebel against God and the ways of sin that draw you from him? If so, answer, I do. I renounce them. I renounce them. Do, do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Um, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word were created. you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Isabella Rose Martinez. Can you put your hand right up here? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Here, I got a towel. Jackson Adam Ryan Paget. I baptize you in the name. How about we use just of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Let me give you. Oh, I do. Okay, we're done. Let me wipe you. There you go. You are sealed with the cross of Christ forever. Juliana Elise Martinez. Okay. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You are sealed with the cross of Christ forever. Olivia Alfandra Martinez, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Olivia, you are marked and sealed with a little of Jesus Christ forever. Elena Elizabeth Martinez. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Elena, you are marked with the cross, sealed with the cross of Christ forever.
Let your lights so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome, we welcome you, you as a body of Christ, Christ and, and into, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Bless you. Bless you all. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and those, all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protect it, where the church is privileged, grant it humility, where the church is fractured, Heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who suffer in any way. We pray for those in this community and those outside with the names of those that we mention on our lips or in our hearts. God of grace. Amen. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace, Hear into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Let's share that peace.
Good morning. To be very brief, uh, I need to acknowledge on behalf of the congregation and those here that this is the last Sunday that Pastor Crosby will be with us. Uh, she is our bridge interim pastor. She came to us the first day of Advent, and she's been with us ever since. She promised to stay with us through the end of February, and then we convinced her that she would stay at least until Easter. And she said she would stay till Easter, which is kind of a fitting departure. But Pastor Crosby has been, while she's been with us, she has spread the good news among us, strengthened our faith, and brought us the peace of Jesus Christ. And as she goes on her pathway, which is back into retirement, which we wish, we, we wish her and her husband David, who's right here, and David has been here every Sunday and in all the activities that Pastor Crosby is here. They want to people. Thank you, David. I have one question. How much to stay? <laughs> we already asked you that. You said no. I know, we I know. You were going. So <laughs> yes. And we understand. understand. <laughs> I can't tell you how wonderful this four months with Grace has been. You all are an incredible congregation. That's why I was saying to you visitors, come back and, and be community with these people. They have loved me. They have loved me so much, I can't even express it. It's a wonderful place, and thank you for all that you have done in support of me. This was good for me. I needed this. <laughs> now I need retirement.
Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, The risen Christ is made, known, is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. Amen. You may be seated. I want to just say a word about communion. Um, today we also have three taking their first communion. They were just baptized, so they're communing today. And so the, that family, that big old chunk in the center there, will come up first and we'll commune them um, uh, after we commune the assistants. Right? So um, it's an open table. All are welcome to come and be fed. Thanks. Okay. Oh, 
Shining. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen. And don't forget to pick up your ducks on the way out.